It is said that the creator economy is expected to see a massive revenue boost and growth in the next decade. And it's no surprise that Sony is doubling down on their efforts to tap into this fast growing market. But can Sony's latest variant, the Sony ZV-E10, bring creators closer to monetization of their content, turning digital content into gig work? And if you're new to the channel, welcome. My name is Brian Olson. I am a content creator from South Africa and the whole entire goal that we have on our channel is to reach that first thousand subscribers so if you find any value in my content please consider hitting the subscribe button as well as the bell notification button i think you'll definitely find the content that we do on the channel of value so please consider hitting that subscribe button as well as the bell notification button and don't forget the thumbs up as well content creators are looking at the best presentation they can deliver their content and the Sony ZV series cameras delivers the quality without the steep learning curve when it comes to semi-pro cameras like the Sony a7S III or the Sony FX3. The next generation ZV-E10 has all of that and more, now with longer battery life and interchangeable lens mounts to give creators even more expandability within their content creation aspirations. Personally for me, the ZV-1 is exactly that. It's compact, it's easy to use, it comes with loads of features like a background defocus button, as well as product showcase in case you want to do your next unboxing video. I think the ZV series cameras are for those who moved on from being just an influencer vlogging random content with their smartphones to creators looking to expand and grow their revenue stream through monetization, as well as gaining sponsorships. So specs, I don't want to focus too much on the specifications other than to draw a comparison between the two cameras. And you'll see that there is very little between them. Specs matter to an extent, but content that is engaging matters most regardless of what tools you're exposed to. No one wants to be the idiot sitting in front of a camera, not knowing what to say, looking silly in HD. So make sure that the things that you have to say matters most rather than focusing too much on spending your hard-earned cash on something that you would not need. Both of these cameras shoot 4K at 24 or 25 frames per second. In fact, up to 30 frames per second at 100 megabytes per second. What does that mean for the average person? Really nothing. But I can guarantee you that means that you're shooting at the highest bitrate quality that an entry-level camera can shoot at. So both of these cameras have access to a slow and quick function that allows you to quickly shoot high frame rates in slow mode at 120 frames per second in HD. You can also shoot time-lapse videos with both of these cameras. So both the ZV-1 and the ZV-E10 come with pro features like HLG as well as S-Log color profiles. But you don't necessarily have to shoot in those picture profiles if you're not affluent with the language or understand what these color profiles are for and what they are meant for. So you can shoot in a standard picture profile that gives you the highest quality dynamic range within that standard picture profile. The ZV series cameras both have face priority auto exposure to make sure that the exposure is set to your face under various lighting conditions. But be aware that this could potentially be a downer, especially when you're in bright sunlight. As the camera exposes for your face, the sky might be blown out. So just be mindful of that. So you can use both the ZV-1 as well as the ZV-E10 as a web camera. And what makes it so fantastic is it's via USB. You can literally plug it into your camera and you can stream high quality video if that is what you into. Both of these cameras have internal directional three axis mic, but you can definitely purchase an additional mic that you can put on the hot shoe that gives you even better audio quality but the standard microphone on the ZV-1 as well as the ZV-E10 are perfect. You don't even need to buy an additional microphone. Both of these cameras have product showcase mode, which just means that when you are out and about and you are doing an unboxing at home perhaps, and you want to show off whatever you're talking about. So with product showcase on, I can show off a particular product and it will focus on that product like it does now. You can see there. My face is blurred out. 
So if I put that down, the focus is back on my face. Whereas when product showcase is off and the focus is on eye order focus, if I do that, it doesn't focus there. I have to literally block out my face in order for you to see that. So both the ZV-1 as well as the ZV-E10, I'm gonna say that probably like a million times, both of those cameras actually have that functionality. So quickly, both the cameras have no record limits, but both of these cameras don't have built-in IBIS, in-body image stabilization. If you put it on active, it crops into the image a little bit to achieve that stabilization. So both of them have a flip-out screen. Both of them have background defocus to achieve a nice blurry background. A nice blurry background is another attribute of professional looking footage. So let's focus on the differences between the two cameras. The ZV-1 has a fixed zoom lens of 24mm to 70mm, whereas the ZV-E10 supports Sony's interchangeable E-mount lenses. If you already own E-mount lenses, going out and getting the ZV-E10 is a no-brainer. The ZV-E10 has improved image quality thanks to the larger APS-C sensor versus the 1-inch sensor shipped with the ZV-1. This means that the ZV-E10 will perform much better in low light situations compared to the ZV-1. The poor battery life of the ZV-1 was always a sticky point for creators as you get so little recording time on one battery. The ZV-E10 ships with Sony's FW battery seen in the A6400. The FW battery however was never great but with improved internal performances, the ZV-E10 is able to eke out some improved battery performance over the ZV-1. And lastly, probably my favorite feature, the ZV-1's high frame rate feature of up to 1000 frames per second in PAL format is a pro feature seen in bigger high frame rate cinema cameras which makes it a fun feature to use, whereas the ZV-E10 achieves slow-mo at a very cool 120 frames per second. And I think the deciding factor for me, the ZV-1 comes with a built-in ND filter. It's not the greatest ND filter. You at least have that option to cut out as much light as possible hitting the sensor. And just to add, something like the A7S III or even the FX3, which is a cinema camera, does not even have an ND filter and you get it in the ZV-1. So that's a definite plus for me. So I think the advantage that the ZV-E10 has over the ZV-1 is that it has a headphone jack. I can probably do this whole entire presentation and I could have poor quality audio because I had no way of monitoring that. Just an added irritant when it comes to the ZV-1. So in terms of pricing, if you look at the ZV-1, it's a once-off cost at $749. So in South Africa, it's marketed at about 16,000 Rand. When it's on sale, it's about 14,000 Rand. You don't necessarily need to buy anything outside of the ZV-1. Whereas in with the ZV-E10, if you buy it with the kit lens, you're gonna pay at about $800. In comparison, if you look at the iPhone mini, which is the base iPhone, the price for that is $749. For those that don't know, I'm an avid supporter of using your smartphone to create smartphone only content. The issues that I've encountered in the past was that if I use my daily driver, my iPhone 11 to create content, I must make sure that I put it on airplane mode because there's nothing worse than you trying to vlog or creating content and the phone rings. So speaking about image quality, the ZV-E10 will always be better than the ZV-1. You're always going to get that better battery life with the ZV-E10. Both of these cameras are focused on having that face priority autofocus, making sure that you're always looking beautiful and shiny and new and brand new. And if you put the, the skin softening effect on, which I generally don't do because I want you to see my ugly face, it has that feature. So the focus is obviously trying to see which one of these cameras is you're going to get the bang for your buck. Additional accessories to obviously look at is to get a really great quality mic. And I would probably say that it's worth spending the cash. Investing in proper sound is just as important as investing in good quality image. And finally, I think that both the ZV-1 and the ZV-E10 are excellent options to kickstart your YouTube aspirations. You get simplicity and affordability in a compact size powerhouse vlogging camera that will guarantee you the best image quality, like in the ZV-1, 
or the stepping stone you need to enter the world of Sony Pro features like grading and coloring to make your images pop with the ZV-E10. Once again, thank you so much for watching the content. I hope you found it valuable. Thank you so much for watching until the end. It's so valuable and so important for us creators in delivering content that is valuable to you. That in turn, you know, the reward for us, retention time, watch time, likes. So our content can reach the audiences that we intend to and then grow as a content creator. But I think the deal between me and you is that I deliver superior content. And you can say this is definitely something that I am enjoying it's definitely something that I can share and obviously this community that I'm trying to grow here I started my YouTube channel in February the growth hasn't been as I envisioned but as I creating content for an audience I've realized you know what type of content to make what to focus on you know we're getting there so if you like the content please share it please tell your friends to join the community if you think that there's, there's someone that can benefit from the value of the content that's on my channel. And until next time, until I feel like making another video or dropping another video, cheers.